Hello everybody, hello, hello, hello. I was just a little bit late. What a traumatic day I've had. Um, but we're going to do this cushion tonight. I'm going to stitch it. I'm going to hopefully going to stitch it from start to finish. Um, and I'm going to try to operate the uh, iPad on my own unless, unless my camera manual uh, helps me out. We'll have to have a see about that. But that's what we're going to make tonight. So I'm going to show you how that's done. So I'm just going to prop that up so we can see it. Um, so, I'm Um, up until about one o'clock this afternoon, then it's um, it was the wrong link. Uh, so I've amended that, and now it's the proper link. So the link is to make this. Let me bring this in. The link is to make that the storage caddy um, that we saw on her channel yesterday, and it's a reversible one, so that's fun. And also the bowl that Abigail made on her chanda. Um, that's now a, as a free download, so you'll be able to see that on my, my page. I'll pop that back there. So um, I'm just going to try and get you up on my iPhone, because hopefully um, it usually says when I'm live, which it is, and then I have to turn the sound down. Um, yeah, there we go. So that's fab. I could just put you... Ah, that's it. There we go. So hopefully I'll be able to see some comments. I'll see. I'm going to try and get this so it's that way around. Oh, okay. That, that'll have to do. That'll have to do. It, it'll, it's going to fall. I know it's going to fall. Okay. So the first thing you need to do to make this gorgeous cushion is to cut yourself some scrap fabric. Okay. So um, I always use sheeting. Um, because A, it might be something that you can recycle or you can buy really cheap sheets around, like I go just go to Wilkinson's near me and you can get, get a um, super king size flat sheet and then you can cut your squares. And I use that a lot for backing cushions, things like that where you don't need to have some great fabric. So um, scrap fabric, so you need to cut 13 inch square, okay? So that's what you need to do straight from the get go. Hi Leslie, hi Lindsay, hi um, Helen, hi Val. Oh, you've downloaded. Oh, thank goodness, what a, what a debacle that's been today. Um, so, um, 13 inch square. Then what you're going to do is get a pen. Now I've used my heat erasable, but actually, to be perfectly honest, you're not going to see these marks when you stitch your pieces on. You, um, so even if you just use a regular biro or something like that, it's fine. Um, so what I've done is on my 13 inch square, I've drawn lines at three quarters of an inch. So I wonder if we can just sort of get in there so we can see those lines. So the first one is at an inch. Um, not that that's vital, but you'll be able to see um, that that's my first line. And then I've gone three quarters of an inch um, in increments all the way up. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to see that fairly clearly on the screen. And I'm sure John will let me know if it's not. Oh, yes, you can see that. So all I'm going to do now is finish off drawing those lines in. So you can see all I'm doing is literally lining up my ruler and if even a regular ruler would do but I'm using my three-quarter mark on my um, threaders ruler and I'm just literally drawing my lines in I'm not going right up to the edge it's not vital um, but all I'm doing is just making sure I've got nice straight lines okay so that's that's it done the next thing you need to do is to cut some strips of fabric I'm going to keep my ruler there in case I need it like I say, I'm going to put all the measurements and everything. I'm going to have to do it for you. I know I will. So I'll, I'll say what it is now and then I'll put it down on a document and you can download it. So um, I needed two lots of strips. So I'm talking selvage to selvage. OK, so if you've got fat quarters, you'll need to double one same. So selvage to selvage, you need two 
strips two and a half inches wide of a plane. So salvage of that. And then you need four, now this is this long strip, okay, this is salvage to salvage. You need four of those and that's to do your actual um, pleating, okay. You'll need more of this to do the binding, um, but we'll, we'll go through it as we go along. Now, um, when you cut your cushion, well it's 13 inches square, you need to cut your strips around about 13 inches square, okay, um, long. <laughs> so your strips are 13 and a half inches long, and, um, sorry, 13 inches long, and then you need to fold it in half lengthways, like you would with binding, and just iron it in half, okay? So what you've done so far is you cut your plain strips in two and a half inch widths, there we go, that's two and a half inch, and then you cut that, take your salvages off, never use your salvage. So you take your salvage off, measure 13 inches, cut. Measure 13 inches, cut. You'll get three out of a long length like this with a little bit left over, okay? Um, and that's enough. So, so with, with the two and the four, that's six. Three six is 18, so you'll get an 18 strips to go on to your 13 inch um, square. So once we've stitched those on, we'll trim it down to 12 and a half inches. But I found if I made it a little bit bigger, it kind of allows for things to move around and then I can neaten it up. It's much better that way, in my opinion. So, so, so far, we've cut our fabric, we've cut our pieces, and we've got all the pieces ready to put on our cushion, okay, our cushion front. So you're going to start off with two of your patterned fabric. Let's get this the right way around for you. Now I'm using the baubles this time. So if you remember we folded this in half and uh, we've got the raw edges here and I'm just going to bring that up to my line. So if I bring that up to my line, I'm not going over the line, I'm just bringing that piece up to the line. Do you see? And that's the first one I'm going to stitch. The next one you'll do is Let's get it the right way around again because the baubles have little. Um, I still haven't got that the right way around. Oh, oh, oh. oh gosh, I'm getting in the muddle. There we are. Oh, it's still upside down, isn't it? Um, so the baubles have little caps on them, so you want the caps to go the right way for whatever reason. I can't get that the right way at the moment. So the second one is going to go up to the next line. So there's the three quarters of an inch mark there and you're just going to bring that those raw edges to that straight line again. And then the third one, I'm going to stitch in a second. Again, I'm just going to bring that up to that line there and marry it up. Now, every time I bring one up to the line, I'm going to stitch, okay? So that's what we're going to do now. So you've seen how to do your, like it's like a grid work. You know how to cut your strips. So let's do a couple of bits of stitching. Can I show you my little foxy? Anybody see my little foxy? Do you like him? He's cute, isn't he? Yeah. His little brooch. I was going to put it on, but I didn't have time. So you can sit just there. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, we've got lots of downloads been successful. Thank goodness for that. We did have a bit of a do with that earlier. So I've got other bits and bobs here that I'm going to talk you through as I go along. Now, if you haven't got a rotary cutter and um, a ruler and a mat, don't worry, use your scissors just to cut your strips. Um, and just, just be careful with your um, with your cutting and make, just make sure that they're nice and straight. So, bring my machine in. I'll do a little bit of a bigger, bigger stitch. So we stitch is a bit quicker. There we go. So look. This is what I did earlier today, so you, I'm not going to bore you with doing all those strips that we talked about. So I've got, a, I've got one, two, three, four to put on, um, and I'll stop there, even though I've got a little bit of space there. I'll stop there because we're going to cut it down and make it neat and tidy. So the next one we're going to put on is the baubles, so I'm going to do that for you now. So let's um, get this the right way around. That's it. <laughs> 
just because it's a directional fabric, it, you have to make sure you're all going in the right way. Once you get into the swing of it, it's fine. So I've just put my fabric and the raw edges up to that line, and I am actually stitching uh, a quarter of an inch, but quite honestly, I wouldn't worry too much about that because it's all going to be covered up. So if you look at the, the pleats I've already done, the little folds I've already done, you can see that's my stitching, but in actual fact, it's covered up by the one that goes over the top. So you could hand stitch this if you want. I think it depends on how much use it's going to get. So there we are. So that's one. So our next line is another bauble. Let's try to do it. Because <laughs> you obviously want the fold facing down. So it's nice and neat. And then again, just a quarter of an inch or so. I, mean, I wouldn't really bother measuring it, to be honest. And you're just going all the way across. Now, on my strips are a little bit longer than 13 inches um, because you do have that extra little bit every time you cut on one of those long strips to actually play with so yeah and, and the piece that's left over is so small I shouldn't worry too much so again we've got one more to put in after this pink gosh isn't it been hot today I bet you've all been like me I like, I like it to be a little cool, I must admit. And uh, I went to the hairdressers and that was nice because she's got air conditioning. <laughs> Thank goodness. But um, yeah, there we go. This is our last one. So, like I say, and, and thank you very much for ordering all your fabric yesterday. My goodness me, what busy shows Abigail and I had. Um, it really was a, a great day. And you're going to absolutely love it. You really are. Now I'm going to trim that down, even though my if you look at my 13-inch square now, I haven't quite um, covered that white piece there, can you see? But I'm not too worried about that because I'm actually going to trim this down I'm, and I might even have to stitch this on again just to hold it. Um, in fact, I think I will because, just in case. So we'll go about there and we'll just do a second line. Um, because I don't really want to trim the first one I did. That's going to be all part of the seam allowance. So just for security, I'll just give that another little um, st steam, uh, seam there. So that's done. So the next thing to do is to actually... Um, let's get this out of the way. Is to actually cut this down. So I'll get my mat, which is over there but I'll get one of mine over here just bear with there we go and we just need to trim this down to um, 12 and a half inches so and I've got I'm lucky because I've got I've got a 12 and a half inch square ruler that I can use and if you haven't got one of those it really it doesn't matter as long as you're um, your square ends up about 12 and a half inches. So I'm going to trim this all away. So I'm going to trim down this side first just to neaten that edge off. So all the way down, get rid of all my bits. Got a nice sharp knife, a uh, blade. I left um, Sarah one of my blades the other day, my rotary cutters, and um, <laughs> it was a bit blunt. So she sort of struggled with it. Uh, <laughs> right, so that's nice and trim. And I'm going to put my ruler on that bottom edge there. And I know that this is now 12 and a half. So I'm just going to make sure that's all lined up properly. So my second row of stitching was perfect, actually. So let's give that a cut. And just keep an eye on your blade and make sure you, you know, you, you lock it because then um, it's so sharp. So there we are. So now I can trim this down to 12 and a half. So we'll have a 12 and a half inch piece. 
There we go. So that's lovely and squared. Let's take that away so you can see. So the next thing to do is to put our, our sashing on or our border. So on, on this one that I made, I used red and I really liked it. And I, I was almost tempted to use black um, because there's black in the trees. So I think um, the next one I do, I'll do the same colourways again. Um, and then I'll, I'll go for black and see what happens and see how it stands out. And I put some of the little um, ranges on there. And I used our double-sided adhesive sheets to actually stick those down. So just as a little extra. Um, and then I use the pink to bind. So I'm going to do something similar tonight. So the next thing is, I've got some fabric I've already cut. And these I've done in three inch um, strips. Pardon? Mr. Cameraman? Am I blurred? That's because I'm moving. Did you want to set it down on the table? <laughs> um, oh, Abigail's watching. Hi, Abby. Hi, Gwen. Hi, Tracy. Lovely. Let's hope we get some. We've got, we got um, lots of people watching at the moment. So, uh, yes, happy 4th of July if you're um, from America, from the USA. Uh, we we, we um, live in an area where there's lots of American servicemen, so I'm, I'm just waiting for the fireworks to go off. Even though it's beautiful sunshine, I'm sure we're going to hear fireworks later. So, right, so I've cut some um, fabric and um, I've made this really long because I'm always worried that I'm going to have it, it's going to be too short. But the first one, I'm, and now you could, look, if you wanted to, you could do your 45 degree angles on your strips, okay? Sometimes I think life's too short. If you're going to do that, you need to give yourself, seriously, um, a lot more length both sides. So uh, hopefully you'll see that on my desk that this bit here you've got the length um, correct and if I bring it in back back here you'll see it better that you need to have those lengths but I'm not doing that and what I like to do a lot because it's quick um, and I sometimes time is of the essence is that and in fact I'll do it just a little bit over um, is to do the same to put my band on here and then put another band on at the top, exactly the same. And then the two side ones are going to be longer. And I like to do it that way. Um, a, it's quite quick, um, but also B, it's, just, it's nice and neat and there's no mathematics involved. Um, so it's nice and easy to do. So again, I'll just make that a little bit longer either side and then just give it a little cut like that. There we go. And then I'm going to put my iron on because I'll need that in a second. Did you want to put the iPad down? Because <laughs> it gets heavy. So all I'm going to do now is stitch this top and bottom, all right? And I'm going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then I'll put the side pieces on, but I won't cut those until I've stitched them. There we go. So I'll start with the top. So I'm just going to bring those edges together. Now, I, the reason why I'm not doing this exactly straight along there and, and bringing it so it's all parallel with each other is just in case I didn't cut it straight. But I know my, uh, my stitching will be, and then I'll trim it off once it's done and I've pressed it. So again, quarter of an inch. Here we go. And you'll cover up that little bit of stitching you did on that second row of stitching and uh, it'll be lovely and neat. So there we go. So I'm pleased that we're going to get a lot of this done because it is, it is an easy project. I know that I've already done a little bit of this stitching um, beforehand but once you get going with this, honestly it took me probably maybe maybe 20 minutes this afternoon to actually stitch these pieces on. Um, so it's no time at all, really. So now I'm stitching the bottom part. And this is where I'm stitching on my folded fabric. I'll show you in a sec. You mustn't worry about it because it's all going to be part of the pattern. There we go, right to the end. I'll just move that a little bit. So now we need to get the iron in. Let's have a look. 
we've had fireworks already from Abigail um, and it's bright sunshine. I know it's weird, isn't it? I See, I am, and my phone's wonky, <laughs> so I can't read. Hopefully no wonky sewing tonight for me after last night's football. I know. I have to say, obviously in my house, uh, my John watches a lot of football, which is great. He loves it, and why not? And so last night we, we, we sat together in the sitting room and I watched it with him. In fact, I probably watched the whole lot until it came to penalties. And then I suddenly realised that perhaps I, my, um, my flowers needed some water. They didn't. Uh, sink water, not out of the tap, I hasten to add. Um, so <laughs> I went and watered my flowers. <laughs> and then I needed to know, so I had to come back in again. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh dear me, never mind. Right, so, let me pop that there a minute, get my mat up again. So I'm just going to trim these edges off now, just make sure I've got my ruler and my cutting mat. It's a funny old business, when you're, um, when you're doing this on your own, in your own craft room, and you're not trying to do it properly, you know what I mean. Um, you you know, you've got all your bits around you and you can move and you can grab stuff and it's all very easy. When you're confined to a chair and a space, nothing is ever at hand, even though you planned it. Um, it's just one of those things. So look, so I'm just trimming that off nice and straight now. So all I did was get my ruler on the edge of where I've cut previously and just brought that down and cut it so it's beautiful. And you know I've ironed it. In. Now look... All my years of dressmaking, and believe me, I have made hundreds of dresses, um, the first rule of thumb was always to iron your seams as you go. It was just the thing. And I stick with that rule, um, and it holds me in good stead because you, bec you become more accurate with your stitching when you do that. Um, and as tedious it is, it is, it's a good practice to get into. So, let's just pop that down. So, you can see now, I've trimmed those off. All we need to do is the two sides. So again, I, I said to you that I'd cut um, some long pieces. And this again is far too long. But we'll, what we'll do is we'll go just slightly over the edge there. Because again, I may not have cut this straight. And there's nothing worse than ironing that back. And, and it doesn't, it's not absolutely square. Um, so I've got tons to play with, look, so I'll start putting that on. So now you can see how it's coming together. And maybe a plainer fabric um, would have been nice on the, on the sashing. It, it's entirely up to you. I must admit, I raided my stash to see what I had would go with this, because I didn't want to use the pink again. <laughs> you know how we get so precious about fabrics? So well, I'm just the same. At all save some of that pink and um, yeah it's a bit crazy doesn't it I'll tell you what else I thought wouldn't it be lovely if you use some of our glitter fabric on these as well and um, if you know if you wanted to have that glitteriness so there we go let's get that off so that's you can see that's a lot lot longer but I personally I feel much more comfortable because maybe my stitching wasn't quite on on the right track. Maybe I cut it not big enough or not small enough, you know what I mean? I, my cutting wasn't right, so all my measurements changed. If I was to cut that absolutely accurately, it's just one of those things that I, I bet anything you like, I'd be half an inch short. So, um, so that's the first bit put on, yeah? So now we'll put the second piece on. Again, I'm not going anywhere near that selvage. Please cut your selvages off. Do not use your um, selvages in your stitching. <laughs> oh dear, I sound like an old school mom. Oh dear me. And I bet we all learned at school, didn't we? How to, how to sew. I was very lucky when I went to school. I had the most amazing needlework teacher um, and she was she took so much time out for me, I was incredibly lucky. So, there we are. So that's my 
second piece. I'll just, in fact, let me just pop that out, out of the way that way. So, if we bring my ironing board up again. So you can see my ironing board now is getting a little bit small for my cushion. It does end up about roughly 16 inches square. And I always say roughly because it always depends on, on your stitching. And, um, you know, how, how you've... Uh, you know, if you've kept the, to the quarter of an inch and things like that. So um, I always say, you know, roundabout, thereabouts. Nobody's going to sit on your sofa at Christmas with a tape measure. And if you do, ban them. <laughs> but, you know, this, this design doesn't is not necessary for Christmas. It's just that we've got this lovely new fabric. And, um, you know, every opportunity I want to make another sample for the show so you can see how it looks and, and how it handles with things that we've stitched. Um, you know, we've had some cracking ideas over the last couple of days. Oh, and don't forget, um, I, I will say again, just because I can't remember if I said it or not, the two downloads for, this, for the storage um, box, the reversible storage box, and Abigail's Beautiful Bowl are now on my website, but the link is on my Facebook page. Um, so um, hop along after this and... Uh, and, and order yours and it's free mine's free for a week um and i'll see how we go about extending that but mine's free for a week abigail's is is free f forever that's what she's told me i've done it for a month at the moment but it's um, yeah but yeah ha download it and make loads and and like abigail said yesterday increase the size and make it bigger um and then you can have it for all sorts of things i think just lovely bits of potpourri in there would be nice. So look, I'm just taking those pieces off now. You can see me, I'm trimming up, just moving this around. It's looking all right, isn't it? I wondered how this colour would go on the sashing, but I'm, I'm liking it. So when we're not far off finishing. Again, I will promise you, I will give you all the measurements of these. I've written it all down as I've gone. Um, and I'll give you the measurements. So there we are. So that's it. That's the, the cushion front. Let's get that out of the way. Let me just see if there's any questions. Um, Karen, love this design. I might do the ornament in the pink rose. Yeah, with the tr rose with the Christmas trees. Yeah. Um, it's not full of selling. Yeah, it's, it's tricky because we have to get that balance. Of course we do. Um, can you turn that iron? It's making me nervous. It's actually quite a way away from me, Abby. I'll push it a little bit further away. Okay. <laughs> and I remember watching a Facebook live back a little while ago and the iron, it looked like the iron was right next to my hand and it truly wasn't. Um, but if it's making Abigail nervous, then we'll move it. I'll just put little Foxy there. So, okay, so now we've made the front, we need to make the back. Now what I do, and I, again, I always are on the side of caution, even if this is 16 and a half inches square, I always cut bigger because you can't add on, but you can take away. So I'm using our linen look fabric and I've cut two pieces. Again, I'll give you the measurements and I've done two pieces. So um, they will, it'll be like um, uh, an envelope back. So I've already turned this over. I don't know if we can come in a little closer and you can see. Oh, Millie's come to play. Hello, Millie. Oh, are you okay? It's a little hot today, isn't it? Yes, she's come to play. Um, so, um, can we see this, um, Mr. Cameraman, please? That I've turned this over twice and top stitched. Please, can you come in? <laughs> He's moaning. Oh, look, can you see? I'll have to hold it up to you if you're not coming in. <laughs> You can see that it's it's top stitched. I've turned it over and I've top stitched. It's about it's an inch really, but I've turned over half and then half again. And so all we're going to do with that is um, you can think about um, the seam. The open pocket tends to go across this way. I don't think I've ever seen it go that way. Although zips can go that way, it makes no difference. It's whatever you do is right. But look, all I'm going to do, see that is a little bit, bit shallow, but there we are, we'll leave it like that, that's fine. In fact, I'll bring it in so it matches. 
I thought that I'd cut that a lot bigger, but there we are. And so I've done right sides to right sides. Now, I'm not going to stitch all the way around and turn it right side through. I'm actually going to bind it. It's because this one here, yeah, I quite like the effect of the binding on the edge of a cushion. So that's done in the same way, it's, it's bound. But you don't have to do it that way. You could just do right sides to right sides and um, turn it through and then you're done. In fact, oh, we could, we could do it. I bet you want to see the binding though, don't you? So look, because I was a little bit out, I told you I would be out with something. I'm happy with that, I'm not with that. Is, I'll get some pins. I've got a few here, not many. And um, now I'm going to just stitch, stitch this together just to hold it. Um, and then I will do the binding, but I'll need to trim all this down. Now I pin these two pieces together. See where I put them? Right side facing down. Oh dear. I love it when a plan comes together. Um, there we go. So where those two piece, pieces lay over the top of each other, I'm going to pin that so it's it stays there. And again, for this side, I like to keep everything flat. And then what I do is... I'll just run around with my machine. Um, you know, I've got a million pins downstairs and I've got none here. Right. <laughs> Millie's just sat down with me. She's fine. Let's move the cushion out of the way. She's come to see. She's having a little biscuit. She's fine. She loves it. She loves being the star of the show. She's been in one or two little Facebook lives. And, um, yeah, she loves it. That cushion is beginning to annoy me. There we are. I'm going to put it flat. So, um, if you don't want to put the binding on, if you've got an overlocker, that takes one minute to go all the way around with an overlocker. And some of, in fact, it's not that one, the other one that I made, that's at Hachanda, um, that's I did with the overlocker. So I'm just going to increase my stitch again, just so we can do this real quick. And I'm just going to literally hold that all in place. And it's, it's I don't, I'm, I'm not even an eighth of an inch on the outside edge. And, um, oh, I know what I've done, I've done something wrong, kids done something wrong so bear with bear with so I've done this as if we we're going to use the overlocker all right so let's just undo all this somewhere or other my there's my quick unpick but we'll quickly just put this now because I'm binding it um, it actually needs to be right sides out so forget everything I just said um, if we could do edit on Facebook Live, I would edit all that out now. <laughs> it reminds me of when when we're doing filming, because I do all, mostly all the product videos. <laughs> and um, not that I've just done three, or John and I have just done three this week. The second two, I had it nailed. But the first one, we had a brief and it had to be 10 minutes long. And I think we got to 44 minutes and, and John said, enough already. I said, well, yeah, but they, they'll, need, they'll need to know all of this. They'll need to know all of this. And of course, uh, we we had to chop it down to, <laughs> to um, 10 minutes. I think we got it to 10 minutes in the end. Is it 10 minutes, John? No. 11? 11. He's a little shy. So... So now we're doing it right side out. So I'll recap. If you're doing it with the binding, which is what I'm going to do, you do right sides out, wrong sides together. Right side, right side. Okay, make sure that it's right side. Yeah. Yeah, so we had to cut the videos um, from 44 minutes down to 11. 
So, <laughs> so oh, poor John. There was, the air was blue for a little while, which has nothing to do with colours of a football team. <laughs> so, oh dear me. Let me just move that a little bit. Yes, bless him. They worked very hard on that, indeed. So there we go. We all make mistakes, don't we? That's a bit close, but that'll be fine. So again, right sides facing out because we're putting binding on. And now I'm going to just stitch this so it holds nicely. Gosh, it's a good job I did really more than I did. So let's go all the way around. I'm not doing quarter of an inch, okay? Um, I'm going about an eighth. So I'm just literally joining those two pieces together, make sure. I know I've probably put more pins in, but um, I'm not sure where they are. They're probably in my work bag. And just go all the way around. Then we'll trim this down. And then the binding, um, when we do quilts, or generally when we do quilts, we tend to do... Um, one long piece that goes all the way around and you do 45 degree turns at the corners and all that. Sometimes that's a little bit intimidating um, and I have to say it takes an awful lot of skill sometimes to get that 100% and even now if I'm in a hurry my corners are not square they tend to be a little bit more sort of rounded which is just you know you just wouldn't pass if you were going to um, exhibit or you know if I was to give it away as a, as a present to somebody it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be the best it would it would have to be you know in my in my world it would have to be a nice square corner so this anyway this isn't like that this is different and that's why I want to show you it actually makes your cushion a little bit bigger as well with the binding which I think is quite nice um, so we're just coming to the end now and so you're actually going to do the binding very very similar to how you did the sashing around here Ooh, that's not quite right but i'll pull that out a little bit there we go see how that's see how that's bunched up there it's looped up there it's because it wasn't quite straight on the fabric so just bear that in mind we'll just have to do a little a little pleat there that'll be fine so we'll just give this a trim, and um, let's do it that way around. So I'm, you can see I'm cutting right up to the edge there. I mean, if you make your back pieces a little bit bigger, and I'll have to measure these. These were, I'm pretty sure, um, here we are. I didn't write it down, must have done. No, I didn't, but I'm pretty sure I measured 17 and a half or uh, nearly 18 inches by 11 and a half. I couldn't have done. Um, but I will measure these because I've had to cut some of my sashing down, which is not ideal. But it's possible I did the um, measurements doing a two and a half inch sash. In fact, you know I did, I remember now. I did it as if I was going to do a two and a half inch. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I love it. Great plans. There's me all prepped and ready and good to go. And yeah, schoolgirl era. I love that. It, it just shows we're all blinking human. Right, so I'm just neaten that up. So if I'd done it <laughs> using my sashing of three inches, then it would have worked. About two and a half inches in it would have worked. So, there we go. so that's nice and neat now. So with the binding, so again, I've cut, uh, in fact, that's selvage to selvage. Again, so selvage to selvage, okay? It is a two and a half inch strip, and I've folded it in half, just like you've been doing all the way along, and ironed it so it's nice and, and straight and, and nice and crisp. Iron as you go. So then if we look at our cushion front, um, what we're going to do is we're going to just overlap by a little bit and go straight across the top there. Okay, so I'm going to, I could cut it, but I, 
I think I'm just going to stitch it and then cut. So I'm going to do a couple of pieces for you and then you'll see how it, this works. So I don't know what time we are and I don't want to keep you too long. So I've my raw edges, my raw edges of my binding that are folded in half are on the raw edge of my cushion. So, so you really you're machining through um, four layers with the backing as well. And then when it doubles over on the back, you've got lots of layers which you can't even count them out. I shouldn't worry about if your baubles are upside down or not because um, your cushion is gonna, it's multi-way, it doesn't matter. So look, I've gone all the way atop with my long piece. I'm just going to snip it there. So that's for the side. So with the other long piece, and don't ever, don't ever take that bit and put that on the other end because it may not fit the sides when you, or this may not fit the sides when you've done. So always go to your fresh piece and do exactly the same again. So you just cut, cut the salvage off. Don't use salvage. Should I have, have I said that about 35 times? <laughs> I'd be going to be shouting at me now. Mum, you said it so many times. Boring now. So again, this is the, the bottom of the cushion. And again, I'm just following my edge. And my lining is caught. There we are. You'll find that sometimes when you're making these types of cushions, that the, you, you, it's getting all stuck somewhere, and it's actually the pocket at the back that's getting trapped on your machine. So, here we go. Over there. Yeah, it looks really nice, doesn't it? I'm, I'm really loving all these teals and that little pop of pink. You, don't, you never really know until you've done it what it's going to look like. So now we've got our two longish pieces and if I just bring this in. Do, do, do. What we're going to do now is we're going to um, fold these back. In fact, you, you ought to iron really, but we'll just finger press for speed. You're just going to fold those pieces back and then with your long and the bottom as well. There we go. I have to say a nice press always makes a difference. So I'll do one side. Lily, it's just a little doggy and she's not going to hurt you. <laughs> so do you see you've got plenty now left over from the rest of the strip to put down that side. So what we've done is we've brought that back, finger press it, we know that's a little bit longer, I'm okay about that. Same at the bottom as well. And make sure that this seam here is facing in. It's, all, it's facing away from your main cushion. Does that make sense? Because in the end, this binding is going to come down and cover that. So just make sure that when you finger press, that you finger press this seam into your binding. So all I'm going to do now is line my selvage off because that's the other end. I'm going to line that up there and what I'm doing is that I'm lining up my raw edges again against the raw edge of the cushion. I'm going just that little bit over and even where I have got that little bit extra there, I'm not worried about that, really I'm not. And I'll put a pin there just to hold, you don't have to. There we go, it'll come out as soon as I start machining. And then we're just going to do a quarter of an inch again, and I'm going to start just off um, the edge of my piece. So if you can see that, hopefully you can zoom in and, and see that. So the pin comes out because I've got it all it locked in place. So now I'm just coming down this side here. All the way down. And because you're, you cut your cushion nice and straight, and your, your sashing is nice, well, <laughs> your sashing should be straight. Again, make sure that seam is facing into your binding, not into the cushion. Because like I say, that binding has got to cover that. So I'm just literally going over that binding there. Can you see? 
and then straight over the top. Okay, and just again trim that. So we're nearly. Oops, I've done something to my machine. There we go. Um, so then you're going to iron that, again you're going to iron that flat, so I'll just trim that piece there. And what you want to do, do you remember we did the, um, the mug rug? And we did the same technique again, somebody was asking me about that the other day. And it's the same technique. So you're just going to fold this back and give it a good press. And then you're going to cut there, but make sure you don't cut into the, your other piece of binding. So just cut like that. That's fine. And again, just make sure that you're not cutting into that binding. Okay. So let's ignore the other side. Let's not do that just at the moment. I can finish that off later because we're almost done. So once you've got your, let me work out top and bottom. Let's do it this way. So once you've got all your sides done, so this is the top, this is the bottom, those are your short pieces, this is the long that's going all down the side. What you're going to do, and hopefully you can get right in here, John, so everybody can see, is to bring your um, fabric over, and I'm hoping you can see this clearly because this is really important, is that you take, so this, this all folds out, so all of your binding is, is all out. So if I turn that over, look, you can see, that is all, all facing out and then what you're going to do this is the top this is the bottom this is the side and you're going to fold that top piece over okay and I'll just pin that in place so you can see and I'm just catching the edge of my binding so can you see how I've done that so I've literally I've pinned that piece there now I really do prefer a bit of hand stitching now so what I'll do is, I'm not going to do it because we haven't got time, but what I would do is I would fold all of this over, all the way along, assume I've done that bit, and I will hand stitch the back of this down. So all of this will be beautiful and neat, and also it's very, very quite therapeutic to actually sit and hand stitch all of this. If, you, if you're brave enough, you can machine, um, or use a decorative stitch like I did on my red cushion, um, and it, it, it sort of covers a multitude of sins. So there we are. So I've folded that over. And once you've hand stitched that one, and you've hand stitched this one over, then you're going to then fold this over. Okay. Now because you've done it really super neat on this end here, when they fold this end in, or this corner in, make it nice and square, um, it, there's no raw edges. It's all folded in on itself a bit, it's like a bit of origami. So if I put a pin in there and we have a little look at that, that is now the perfect corner. Hopefully you'll see that. It's quite a long way away, but hopefully you'll see that that's now the perfect corner. And you'll see how that works. And then you're, all you're going to do is just hand stitch that down. Just pop those bits in, but that's just going to be hand stitched down all the way around the back. And then, you're, then it's done, and, the, and your cushion is there ready to go in, your cushion opening, um, and you've made the most fantastic cushion. It's almost like a, a quilted cushion, isn't it? And of course you put, could put wadding on the back to make it super neat. So hopefully that was okay. It, I don't know if there's any questions. Um, let me have a quick look at my phone, see if there's anything important. Oh, we can hear the dog, is that right? Oh, the camera and sign in desperation. <laughs> That's Abby. She can hear you. That's because the microphone is nearer to John than obviously to me. Um, yeah, oh, Millie, yeah, she is beautiful. Um, yeah, the pink, pink linen really works with this, Karen, it really does. And it is lovely fabric, isn't it? Yeah, a bit of... Um, Oh, I knew I was going to forget the name of the lady. Beth Studley. Beth Studley fabric. So you could look out for that. Um, this this bag here, um, that's on my list. Um, I've got to change it slightly. I'll tell you the story why. It's because I bought... <laughs> John sighing. 
I bought this on my holidays. It's been handmade by a lady and it was in a beautiful little gift shop and I bought it because I like the style of it. And um, I'm not going to copy it because that would be very unfair because it's somebody else's design. And there's a little pocket inside as well. Um, but I'm going to adapt it so I can put it on as a pattern in my, on my um, web page. Um, but it's, it's sweet, isn't it? Um, and I, and I, I like it for like a packed lunch, isn't it? It's a packed lunch size bag. I like that very much. Um, so, so there we are. Let me have a look. Fab Janice. What's this? I made Abigail's bowl this afternoon. Oh my gosh. Janice, that's amazing. The arm was making me nervous too, Karen. Honestly, it's quite a way away from me. I know it perhaps looks a little bit near. All right, look, I'll go through this afterwards. I'll see if there's any questions. I will answer all your questions. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it made sense. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a, a lovely rest of your evening and I'll talk to you all soon.